dog. Ah, almanac. Um, how do I get it? In heaven's name. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, it's right there. Keep going. I saw it. What is it? Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Where is the thing? Where the hell did it go? Jump. Okay. Wait, so where's the dog? Oh, there's a pig! Can I pet the pig? Pet the pig! Okay, you're less cute than the dog. <laughs> Good dog. Oh, you're so cute! Can I pet the horse? Why can't you pet the horse? What? I don't have any food. You cannot pursue your course without ogling these people. Don't bug me. Where did that page go? That's not it. If you're not that? Oh well, it's a cat. I think he's running faster than this here. Okay, let's carry on, shall we? Wait, page. Come on. If he seeks trouble, he wants to give it. What the hell is that? Who the hell are you? Keep back away, damn you! Um, that's what I wanted. I wanted the rifle. Thank you, bye-bye. Controls are a bit weird in this game. <laughs> well, have anything to say? What do you have to say for yourself? Tell me about yourself, William. What's to tell? I was born in Ireland to Catholic parents, which I learnt early in life severely limited my opportunities. So I converted to Protestantism and journeyed here at the behest of my uncle. But I fear my uncle Peter was not the swiftest of men. He sought to open trade with the Kanyan Gahaga, 
but chose to build his settlement away from the trade routes instead of on them. I tried to reason with the man, but... <sighs> as I said, not the swiftest. So, I took what little money I'd earned and bought my own little plot of land. I built a home, a farm, a store, and a mill. Humble beginnings, but well situated, which made all the difference. That's not so humble. So this is how you came to know the Mohawk? Indeed. And it has proved a valuable relationship. But still no mention from your contacts of the precursor site. No hidden temple or ancient constructs? Yes and no. Which is to say, they have their fair share of sacred sites. Earthen moons, forest clearings, hidden caves. But nothing matching what you describe. No strange metals. No odd glows. Hmm. It is well hidden. Even to them, it seems. But cheer up, my friend. You'll have your precursor treasure. I swear it. To our success, then. And soon. What would... What about first bucket over here? No? Okay, let's do this. Evening, gentlemen. Charming. <laughs> oh, peace, Charles. He'll grow on you. Oi! Catherine, you fussock! Get back here! Daddy needs a drink! Maybe you had enough. How fares the search? Maths and maps are not cutting it. What of your local contacts? We'll need to earn their trust before they'll share what they know. <clears throat> I have an idea on how we might be affecting that. There's a man who's taken to enslaving natives. Rescue them, and they'll owe us. <laughs> Do you know where they're being held? Afraid not. Benjamin Churchwell. He's a finder and a fixer. He's also on your list. And there I was, wondering whom I might solicit next. Well done. You are a disgusting human being. Church residence. This house was built in 1707 by a prominent local merchant named Robert Califf. Benjamin Church bought it from his heirs to use as a Boston residence. Church's practice is on Newbury Street, a fairly short walk away, so the house was in an ideal location. It's also in a nice part of town, even in colonial Boston, two story houses with fenced in gardens don't come cheap, and they didn't even get cable. Actually, given the location, it seems that Church's practice was doing very well indeed. That, or he had another source of revenue. The Newlin Hall. Don't let the French spelling confuse you. The name of this building is pronounced Fenul or Fanel. Getting it wrong is a good way to indicate that you're not from around here. But it's also a great way of proving you're not French, which in my experience is a real boon. Also, if you want to pass as a local, you should take a good look at the Willow Bane. It's a Boston landmark. Legend has it that it, in the War of 1812, suspected spies were asked what was on the top of Fenwheel Hall. Only a true local would be able to say it was a grasshopper. The building was named after Peter Fen Fennel, the local merchant who paid to build it. It was meant as a place for local farmers to sell their goods so their carts would stop crowding the streets. And also, so you didn't have to walk near, fa near farmers. However, it's the meeting hall on the second floor which gives the building its nickname, the Cradle of Liberty. That's rather ostentatious, and dare I say American as a nickname, but it's not inaccurate. People met here to protest the Stamp Act. The first anti-tea tax meetings were also held here. Anti-British meetings occasionally drew crowds so large that the building couldn't even hold them, at which point they all went to the old South Meeting Hall. During the siege of Boston, the meeting hall here was made over into a theater. Since plays of any kind were banned in Boston under ordinary circumstances, something I think should still be law, actually. This is yet another example of the British loyalist sticking it to the rebels.
Okay, so we jumped again. Perhaps we'll be forced to venture the frontier. Could you see me? So the traversing fun part is being excused from this game, huh? Wonderful. Break it or pick it? Break it. Charles? Sir? <laughs> Never mind. Seems like we're not the only ones looking for Mr. Church. Damn it, he could be anywhere. What do we do? We find him. Come. I'll show you how. That's uh, kind of weird, but okay. Give stuff on benches as neighbors. So I'm not gonna get caution, those targets must not be killed. Should we write his family, do you think? Not our business to meddle, even if we've the best of intentions. But if you could have seen it, they were surely drunk carrying on like that, and during the day, no less. Another mercenary. For the finest, daintiest sleeve ruffles, this side of Paris. Uh -huh. Step I'm into familiar with this concept. Parlor. Church Street, past the common. <laughs> Scandalous behavior from one who aims to be a surgeon. Not likely if he keeps up such carousing. Truly a shameful display. Benjamin's parents would be mortified. Perhaps I should send someone to retrieve him before he damages his reputation beyond repair. They stumbled off to the northeast, no doubt in search of a tavern or some other place of ill repute. Start questioning those on the street. I'm headed for higher ground. Map a minimap reveal as you explore your environment, climb to increase the rate of revelation. Revelation, climb the church. Father Patrick asks all able bodied men to give an hour of their labor this Saturday as the, the church is in need of much restoration. This looks very climbable. Oops. Okay, never mind. Climb it is. Yeah, but they're watching me now. What? Oh. Okay. Any quick way down? Thanks for the monies. Actually, yeah, let's go non lethal until I have to. What? But I like the. Be higher up. Get yourself in be there. You're not <coughs> complaining, so you're paid to work. The disappearing, reappearing postcards. New South Meeting House. Another wooden church, this time with a bell in the steeple. Samuel Adams' father, also named Samuel Adams, was one of the founding members. I'm surprised it wasn't torn down for firewood during the siege. 
But I guess this man was just hadn't angered the British enough for that. It's conveniently named so you won't mistake it for the old South Meeting House. Where all the important events happen, simple simple is best. I'm describing the naming system, I'm not describing you. Vantage points helps reveal the map and locate points of interest by speed to view your surroundings. Very cute pose. Time to take a listen. With luck, one of those people knows what became of Benjamin. Isn't that too far away? Here's a moving group of guards, do not fail a single eavesdrop. Okay. Okay, so we've got a group moving in, we've got a group moving out. That's my target, that's targets. They are not targets. The news of our times in today's Boston Weekly Advertiser. You know what? I like the fact that you need to press something to to pickpocket and to jump because that was a big problem in the older games. Though he's had to charge, but one way or another, the debt would be settled. I don't envy the man. Ah. Reload last checkpoint. Time to take a listen. With luck, one of those people knows what became of Benjamin. Need to find a place to hide. I'm asked to prize, but they all plead ignorance. Look at that! They're lying! Aye. Well, what can I do? Threats light off them, and I'll not deign to grovel. Actions speak louder than words, my friend. Arrest one and put him in stocks. See if he's so glib then. To do so without cause will set them singing songs about us. Last thing the city needs is town criers complaining about our abuse of authority. And forget it. The crime is done. The killer's gone. Those who know won't share their secrets. If the city wishes to harbor scoundrels, let them pay the price for it. Can I pet the sheep? I can pet the sheep! Matt, you do! I love this game so far.
What am I doing? Really, what am I doing? He's not moving to God, does not fail a single lift stop. Get down! Chase him. Now! I'm guessing this group, these guys can help me eavesdrop. I asked if I could help, and they waved me away. Insisted it was all under control. How odd. Did they say what had happened? No. Only that it was a trifling matter, and he'd be returned home soon. There was some blood, though. So I wonder if it wasn't more serious than they let on. Where were they taking him? Towards the hilltop. Perhaps there's a doctor at the fort. Is the E Wow. What is it? Need something if I am not having it. I have them all. Is this a merchant? Oh, it's a merchant. Cartridge. Inventory full. Smoke bombs. I don't know. Not these guys. Oh! God will not come out. I'm expressing sincere. When you see travel no further this day, you found it. The cart. But they'll keep on moving, so I need to follow them. Hit me. So he says to church that one way or another the debt would be settled. I don't envy the man. He's grim times ahead. Well, what do you think they're planning? All I know is it can't be good. Cut it. Probably looking for a nice quiet place to do the deed. From what I hear tell, his work usually involves quite a bit of screaming. Which reminds me, you'd best not buy any meat tomorrow. <laughs> what? Good call that. That's disgusting. See, Charles? We'll have church in no time. Just as I said we would. If I might ask, sir, where did you learn to do all this? It is a requirement when you're raised in the manner that I was. Perception is fundamental to the order. It guides the feet when running and climbing, informs the hands when striking and fighting. But most important, it transforms the senses, and we begin to know the world in a different way. Yeah, I probably can't do climbing stuff while he's following me. Remain undetected. You're not some cloak twitching prig, are you? What are you talking about? Oh. That's the fault, I guess. Careful. The place is well guarded. We need to slip past them. 
Okay, not here. Get out, get out! Fort Hill and South Battery. Fort Hill is the second highest hill in Boston, if only it had tried harder when it was a little hillock. And overlooks Boston Harbor. Defenses were built here in the mid 17th century, along with a smaller one gun fortification near the harbor named the South Battery. The South Battery was expanded in the 1740s but had fallen out of use by the 1760s. Both it and Fort Hill were rebuilt by the Patriots during the Revolutionary War, but both were dismantled before the turn of the century. Fort Hill and the hill itself, not the fortification, was leveled in the late 1860s to make room for more land, though it never realized its dream of becoming the highest hill in town. If that sounds familiar, it's because it happened to every hill in Boston. Hills are the natural enemies of Bostonians and always will be. Company lead to the waterfront, remain undetected. Uh, are you with me? Dude. On me. Let's go. Not doing anything. Come on. See, Charles, we'll have church in no time, just as I said we would. If I might ask, sir, where did you learn to do all this? It is a requirement when you are raised in the manner that I was. Perception is fundamental to the order. It guides the feet when running and climbing, informs the hands when striking and fighting. But most important, it transforms the senses, and we begin to know the world in a different way. Careful. The place is well guarded. Where the hell are you going? Where the hell are you going? Get over here and hide. Or hide over there. Hide over here. Oh my god. Oh. Okay then, just wait. Let me do my thing. Maybe... We start high. We still have house sentence undetected. Yeah, I know. Trying to take care of take care of things. Before I call him in. Two of them. I can do this all day.
Come here. Damn it. Why can't you hide in the same place that I'm hiding? Hey, mask on. Mask off. <laughs> They're dropping like flies and they don't care. Chicken! Chicken! Yeah, I definitely need a dog cam. Charles, Let's go. we'll have church in no time, just as I said we would. If I might ask, sir, where did you learn to do all this? It is a requirement when you're raised in the manner that I was. Perception is fundamental to the order. It guides the feet when running and climbing, informs the hands when striking and fighting. But most important, it transforms the senses, and we begin to know the world in a different way. Careful. The place is well guarded. We need to slip past them. Hang hide on. here. I mean, Stop. hide here. How do I tell you to hide here? Controls, no. Tools, blah, 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 tools. Contextual actions. How do I target? No idea. Oh. Let's go. Let's try this. Where? Get in here and hide. Why are you not hiding? What? Where? Over here, where I'm hiding. Are you seriously gonna blow this? Maybe not. Let's go. Oh. 
locked. Mm. I'll have to find the key. Wait here. And still remain undetected. If I take him out, will someone notice? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Or maybe it does. You didn't see anything. I was hitting. Hiding. Hidden? you always make these things so difficult, Benjamin? Merely provide me with recompense, and all shall be forgiven. I'll not pay for protection I don't need. Clearly, you do require protection. Else we wouldn't be here. How very gutch. Now, what shall we do about our guest? Maybe. I'll take his hands. Put an end to his surgery. Maybe. I'll take his tongue. Put an end to his waggling. Or maybe. I'll take his cock. Put an end to his fucking us. So many options. I can't possibly decide. Take all three. No, hold a moment. Perhaps I was... Hasty in refusing you earlier. I'm so very sorry, Benjamin. But that door has closed. Be reasonable, Silas. Silas, huh? It's always a Silas. I rather think I was. But you took advantage of my oh. generosity. I won't be made a fool a second time. <sighs> I fear I lack the constitution to bear witness to such barbarism. Come find me when you're finished, Cutter. You'll regret this, Silas! Do you hear me? I'll have your head! No. I rather think you won't. This is actually not Cutter. Huh. Quick little swipe and no more is. How's that sound, Mr. Church? At least I'll be spared more of your inane prattle. You're a Commoners do it, Cutter. I'm proud of it. A little bit from here, a little bit from there. Make mistake. Nope. I'm afraid not. Who? Who are you? Haytham Kenway, at your service. I, I, I don't understand. Well, why are you here? Uh, walk with me, Mr. Church, and all will be explained. And another jump. Yay! Did it okay. Making friends is easy. Johnson's told me what you intend. As it happens, the man who held me is the same one that you seek. His name is Silas Thatcher. That fancy lad is our slaver. 
Don't let his velvet tongue deceive you. A crueler and more vicious creature I've never known. What can you tell me of his operation? He hosts at least a hundred men, more than half of whom are redcoats. All this for some slaves? <laughs> Hardly. The man's a commander in the king's troop, in charge of the Southgate Fort. We need to find a way inside. Hmm, let me think on it. In the meantime, I'll attend to our final recruit. John Pitcairn's our man. I'll take you to him. After you, Charles. Really? I'm a fucking noble, lasses. Lass. State your business. New recruit. More kindling for the pyre, eh? Well, go on then. How'd you manage that? Did you forget, sir? My commission is with General Braddock. When I'm not attending to you, of course. Cops Hill Battery. Cops Hill is one of the tallest hills in Boston and the highest point in Boston North End. The hill was fortified during the siege of Boston, partly to discourage rebels from hiding their own fortifications across the river on the Charlestown Peninsula. The artillery on Cops Hill was fired on the Continental Army during the Battle of Bunker Hill. Well, sort of. It was actually a bit more destruction than destruction, at least at the Breed's Hill fortification. The artillery fire on the town of Charlestown was more effective. The resulting fires forced out Continental Army snipers and leveled the town. In 1754, John Pitcairn was a young captain in the British Marine Corps. He fought in the French and Indian War, but I can't find much about his post postings. He's listed as being on the HMS Lancaster during the capture of Louisbourg, that's in Canada. No record of him being on the American side of the colonies, but it seems he did some covert work as well. That will explain the lack of details. Pitcairn was promoted to Major in 1771. He gained a reputation for being well liked by his subordinates and praised by his enemies. That's a difficult trick to pull off. Maybe he had a lovely smile. Thomas Hickey was an Irish born member of the British Army. He arrived in Boston in 1752, but it wasn't long before he was assigned to William Johnson's personal guard. Apparently, in Johnson's request, possibly because their families were connected in Ireland. Maybe he found the name Hickey funny. The record isn't clear. Hickey served under Johnson during the French and Indian War, but then he left the army after being written up several times for disorderly conduct. After 1760, Hickey disappears from the historical record for several years. I do, however, have several mentions in William Johnson's household accounts of payments made to a TH. Possible Hickey was working for him as a spy. If so, he should really have developed some tougher codes to crack. I'm going to walk faster, I can walk faster. Pitcairn, you fool! Your acts are treacherous. Give me one good reason. I shouldn't kill you right now. Were you planning to announce yourself? Or did you hope my men Sir, wouldn't notice your arrival? If you'll allow me to explain. Ho <laughs> ho! By all means. I should like very much to hear this. I have not deserted, sir. I am here under Commander Amherst's orders. Show me a letter bearing his seal. And you might be spared the gallows. I have no such thing. The nature of my work, sir. It's... It's the sort of thing best not put to paper. Hey, them. General Braddock? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Wolves often travel in packs. 
Master Pit Cairn won't be here for but a few weeks. I shall return him to his proper post once our work is finished. The devil's work, no doubt. It's bad enough my superiors have insisted. I grant you use of Charles. But they said nothing about this traitor. You'll not have him. Edward, listen to reason. We're done here. See these gentlemen out. <laughs> nice hat. Well, that didn't go as I expected. And to think I used to call him brother. What now? They'll chase us off if we try and return. We're done with this camp. And as luck would have it, so are they. Come along. What are you planning? To steal Master Pitcairn. What? You'll see. Now, when I give the signal, you're to distract Braddock's patrol and lure them into a dead end. Edward Braddock. Edward Bulldog Braddock was a major general placed in charge of British troops at the beginning of the French and Indian War, probably because he had a nickname like Bulldog. Braddock was serving as the acting governor of Gibraltar when he received the command in North America. He was given control of two regiments of regulars and assigned to win back Fort Ducroix, I guess, from the French, known as the Braddock Expedition. As part of a larger attack on the French colonies in the continent. Braddock had been well liked as the governor in Gibraltar, but things changed once he reached North America. He had been known for keeping strict order among his troops, but it seems he was went beyond that into brutality. He gained a reputation for being quick-tempered and cruel. He also displayed contempt for non-British soldiers that alienated the colon colonial militia he was trying to recruit. So a cruel racist bulldog then. You my least favorite type of bulldog. Braddock took a bullet to the chest during the Battle of 1755. Rumor has it from one of his own soldiers. Which is a job hazard when you're nasty to the people around you and they all have guns. Sounds like the bulldog may have been put may have been put down. Is that a vantage point? It is. The French commander de Jumonville has been killed in a Christchurch. This is known today as Old North Church because it's the oldest church in the north end of Boston. But up to 1776 it would have been known by its official name Christchurch, named after Jesus Christ, former celebrity carpenter. This is where on the night of Paul Revere's ride two signal hunters appeared to warn rebels on the opposite shore that the British regulars were on their way to seize weapons. A signal was Paul Revere's idea. The conflict of popular belief, the lamps were in the signal sent to Revere. They were meant to warn lookouts on the opposite shore in case Revere was captured. This church was a natural choice for signal flame. It was the highest steeple in Boston, easily seen from the other side of the river. Even better, the church was an Anglican. The congregation was full of wealthy loyalists who would suspect the church sexton, Robert Newman, a friend of Revere's, of sneaking into the church at night to send secret messages. Well, the British would, actually. They captured Newman a few days later and questioned him. He put on a terrific show and managed to convince them he was innocent, and then fled down, which didn't really back up the whole innocent thing very well at all. Where's the Rockstone Marble? No. Its residents are too content. More of Lynn or Ship Street? Yes. Those fresh arrived are often soon in dire straits. They're more likely to seize upon an opportunity to fatten their purses and feed them. Contract the services of Tom Harlan. It is reported that Lieutenant Colonel Washington has surrendered all the places are trifling. Truly shall you be amazed by the variety of loot I stock in my humble stall. What are we trying to do here? Tail brothers for all, that's it.
Now! The Silver Fox offers all travelers the... <laughs> You thieves and scoundrels, one and all! <laughs> Fire on you and your false war! Did you pick up horse dung? <laughs> Did you throw horse dung at him? After him! Follow lead to ambush Braddock's patrol. Unhand him, Edward. Ah, oh, you again. Let us go. And John Pitt can with us. <laughs> I will not have my authority challenged. Nor I. Put them all in chains. Don't do this. Prevent snitches from calling reinforcements? When was that happened? Okay, guess we do this too. Well, what? Who? When? What are all of them in my sights? Come on, move, move! Now, John. You're Traitor! With us. Go on then. Join them on their fool's errand. And when you find yourself lying, I assume broke, you've good reason for causing all this madness. What is it you require of me? I'll explain everything on the way. Okay. New email. Then what? What do I do with this? How do I... If I may, I was curious about your past with Braddock. You two clearly have a history. Edward was one of us upon a time, and I considered him a close friend. He was brave and bold in ways few men are. But everything changed at the siege of Bergen op Zoom. We had lost the fortress to the French, and were in the midst of egress. There was a skiff hidden at the port with which we planned to make our escape. As we drew near, a young man and his family came upon us. Begging for safe passage. I consented. 
but Edward refused. The young man called him Craven then. So Edward killed him and all the rest. Right. Even the children. To this day, I don't know why. Was this the first time he'd struck out? Or had I simply never seen it before? Either way, things were never the same after that. We campaigned together a few more times, but each outing was more disturbing than the last. He killed, killed. Enemy or ally, civilian or soldier, guilty or innocent. It mattered not. If he perceived one to be an obstacle, they died. He maintained that violence was a more efficient solution. It became his mantra. And it broke my heart. Psychopath. I had no idea. He hides it well and intimidates into silence any who discover him. Those who persist have a tendency to find misfortune. And we should stop him. I suppose you're right. But I maintain a foolish hope that he might yet be saved and brought back round to reason. I know. I know. It's a silly thing to believe that one so drenched in death might suddenly change. I'm sorry to have brought this up. It was not my intent to sour you. Nonsense. We are brothers now. There should be no secrets between us. So, a question for you. Why medicine? I'm supposed to tell you I care for my fellow man, right? That I chose this path because it allows me to accomplish a greater good. It's money. Are these things not true? Perhaps. But that's not what guided me, no. For me, it was a less abstract thing. I like money. There are other paths to fortune. Uh, but what better where to peddle than life? Nothing else is as precious more so desperately craved. And no price is too great for the man or woman who fears an abrupt and permanent end. You're disgusting. Your words are cruel, Benjamin. But true as well. You're disgusting. You took an oath to help people, did you not? I abide the oath, which makes no mention of price. I merely require compensation, fair compensation, for my services. And if they lack the required funds? Then there are others who will serve them. Does a baker grant free bread to a beggar? Does the tailor offer a dress to the woman who cannot afford to pay? No. Why should I? You said it yourself. Nothing is more precious than life. Indeed. All well, the more reason one should ensure they have the means to preserve it. You are an awful human being. Gentlemen. I believe I found the solution to our problem. Or rather, Odysseus has. How do you? Are you a new guy? <laughs> the Greek hero, you lobcock. <laughs> Allow me to explain. <laughs> this is a lobcock. We enter Silas' fort under the pretext of kinship. Once inside, we spring our trap, free the captives, and kill the slaver. <laughs> dodgy, dodgy. I like it. Then, let us begin. First, we need to find ourselves a convoy 